Wildcats, I'm Faith Davis. I'm a varsity cheerleader for the Hardy Wildcats. I'm Dylan Davis and I'm a varsity football player and we are both Bobcat alumni. Today we will be reading chapter 10 out of the Lemonade Wars. Chapter 10, Malicious Mischief. Malicious Mischief, the act of purposely destroying the property of someone else's business. Jesse was all in knots. Evan was madder than ever at her and she couldn't figure out why. He had said, do you want to call off the war? And she had said, sure, let's call off the war or something like that. That's what she'd meant to say. That's what she wanted to say. But what had she really said? She mentioned Megan. Oh, she almost spilled the beans about Megan giving her the $104, but she hadn't. She kept her mouth shut just in time. Jesse smiled, remembering that. So why had Evan acted like that? What was the matter with him? Jesse laid down in her bed. The world was a confusing place, and she needed Evan to help her figure it out. If this is what fourth grade was going to be like, she might as well just give up now. And there was something else that was tying her up in knots. That $208, it wasn't really hers. Megan had given it to her to make a donation. She had given it to Jesse the way Evan's friends had given their money to him. That still made her so mad when she thought about it. Oh, she wanted to get even with him for saying she didn't even have friends. So even though it looked like she had $208 in her lockbox, only half of it, that money she could honestly call her own. Still, if she pushed, if push came to shove and she needed it all to win, sure, she'd use it all. This was a war, but if she pretended that all the money was hers. Hey, what if Evan has even more than that? So if she lost, even with Megan's money, go, Jesse hadn't thought of that. If she lost, even with $208, if she lost. Oh my gosh, winner takes all. She would lose all of Megan's money to Evan. How could Jesse explain that to her friend? You see, I took all the money you earned to help rescue animals, and I lost it to my brother, who's going to buy an iPod. Megan would hate her. All of the girls who were friends with Megan would hate her, and Evan already hated her. So that was that. Goodbye, fourth grade. She couldn't use Megan's money to try and win the bet. It was too risky, but she didn't have enough to win on her own. Jesse felt desperation rise in her throat. How much money did Evan have? She had to find out. Jesse tiptoed upstairs to the attic office. She listened at the closed door. Her mother was on the phone. Then Jesse snuck downstairs. Evan was watching TV in the, in the family room. Like a whisper, she crept back upstairs. And into Evan's room. There was a strict rule in the Trisky house. No one was allowed in anyone else's room without an express invitation. That was the term. It meant Jesse had to say, Evan, can I come into your room? And Evan had to say yes before she put even one toe over the, the line. So even though Evan's door was wide open, just crossing the threshold was a direct violation that carried a fine of $1. <laughs> but that was the least of Jesse's concerns. She snuck over to Evan's bookshelf and picked up a carved cedar box, Evan's, Evan's chosen souvenir from the family's summer vacation. The orange red wood of the box had a scene etched into the, the top. A sailboat sailing past a lighthouse while gulls flew overhead. The words, Bar Harbor, Maine, were painted in the sky. The box had brass hinges, a clever latch. What it didn't have was a lock. Jesse flipped open the lid, immediately smelling the spice, sharp scent the, of the wood. She couldn't believe her eyes. Her hands started pawing through the bills, dozens of them. There was a 10 and a bunch of fives and more ones than she could count. She sat on Evan's bed and quickly sorted out the money. Evan had $103.11, 89 cents less than she had, 89 cents. She could sell one lousy cup of lemonade tomorrow and beat her. And there was nothing she could do about it because she'd be at the beach. I can't let him win, she thought, I can't. She had gotten to the point where she couldn't even remember what had started the whole war she couldn't remember why it had been so important to win in the first place. Now she just had to win. She messed up the money and stuffed it back in the, into the box. 
That night in bed, she lay awake, trying to think of some way to stop Evan from selling even a single glass. Sometimes in the dark, dark thoughts come. Jesse had a very dark thought. The next morning was Sunday, and the rule in the Trusky house was that everyone could sleep in as late as he or she wanted, but Jessie awoke to the sounds of the electric garage door opening. She sat up in bed and checked the clock, 8 a.m. Then she looked out her window, just in time to see Evan pedaling away on his bike, his backpack on his back. She quickly dressed and hurried down to the kitchen. Her mom was making scrambled eggs and toast. Hi, Jessie. Want some? She asked, pointing with her spatula at the pan of sizzling eggs. No thanks, said Jessie. I washed your blue bathing suit last night. It's hanging in the basement. What time are the motorways picking you up? Nine o'clock, said Jessie. Mom, where did Evan go? He went to the store to buy some lemonade. Jessie's mom scooped the eggs onto a plate and put the pan in, in the sink. When she turned on the faucet, the pan hissed like an angry snake. A great cloud of steam puffed into the air and then disappeared. What's going on, Jess? What's with all the lemonade stands and you and Evan fighting? Jessie opened the pantry cupboard and pulled out a box of kicks. Nothing, she said. She watched the cereal very carefully as she poured. She didn't want to look at her mother right then. Miss Tresky got the milk out of her refrigerator and put it on the counter next to Jessie's bowl. It doesn't seem like nothing. It seems like there's a lot of bad feeling between the two of you. Jessie poured her milk slowly. Evan's mad at me, and he's going to be a whole lot madder after today, she added in her head. What's he mad about, asked Miss Tresky. I don't know. He called me a baby and said I ruined everything, and Jessie felt it coming. She tried to hold it back, but she knew it was coming. Her shoulders tightened up, her chest caved in, and her mouth opening open in a howl. He said he hates me. Tears pulled, poured out of her eyes and dropped into her cereal bowl. Her nose started to run and her lips quivered. With every sob, she let out a sound like tires squealing on a rut road. For the whole time Jessie cried, her mother wrapped her in a hug. And then like a faucet turned off, Jessie stopped. She had told the truth. She really didn't understand why Evan was so angry. Even before the lemonade war, he had been mad, and Jessie still didn't know why. Better, Miss Tresky? Asked Miss Tresky. Not much, said Jessie. She wiped her nose with her paper napkin and started eating her cereal. It was soggy, but thankfully not salty. Don't you think it would be a good idea to find out what he's mad about? Asked Jessie's mom. You're never going to stop being mad at each other until you both understand what the other person is feeling. I guess so, said Jessie. It can be hard. Sometimes it's even hard to know what you're feeling yourself. I mean, how do you feel about him? Asked Miss Tresky. Jessie didn't have to think long. All the insults and angers, the confusion and fighting seemed to converge in a single flash of white hot feeling. I hate him. I hate him for saying all of those mean things and for not letting me play. I hate him just as much as he hates me, more. Miss Tresky looked sad. Can we have a sit down about this tonight? After you get back from the beach. No, said Jesse. Remember the, the spit valve. Evan would be mad if he knew that she had worried mom with their fighting. And then he'd spill the beans about the terrible things she was about to do. Jesse didn't want her mom knowing anything about that. We'll work it out ourselves, mom. I promise. Evan and I will talk tonight. I'm sorry I've been working so hard, said Miss Tresky. I know it's a lousy end to the summer. It's okay, Mom. You gotta work, right? Yes, no, I don't know. I promise I'll be finished by dinner time tonight. That way we can go all around, we can go all, go to the fireworks together. Jesse's mom looked out the window. I hope they don't get canceled because of the weather. They're saying scattered thunderstorms this evening. Jesse and her mom finished breakfast without saying much else. I'll clean up, said Jesse. She liked to do the dishes and she wanted to do something nice for her mom. While she cleaned, she thought about the terrible plan she'd come up with last night. It, it was mean. It was really mean. It was the meanest thing she'd ever imagined doing. I'm not going to do it, she decided. I hate him, but I don't hate him that much. 
She was putting the last glass in the dishwasher when Evan walked in. His backpack was bulging. I thought you were going to the beach for the whole day, he said. Megan's picking me up and in half, half an hour. She thought she saw Evan stiffen up. Good. What's in the backpack? Not much, he said, dumping out the, the contents into the kitchen table. Cans of lemonade mix rolled all over. Jesse tried to count, but there were too many. Fifteen? Twenty? Holy macaroni. How many cans did you buy? Thirty-two. Evan started to stack the cans in a pyramid. But, but, you don't need that much. Even to win, you don't need that much. That's, that's... She did the calculations in her head. That's 256 cups of lemonade. If you sell them at 50 cents a piece, a dollar. I'm going to charge a dollar a piece. Jessie felt like her head was going to explode. You'll never sell it at all, she said, but there isn't a neighborhood in the town that will buy 256 cups in one day. Too much lemonade, not enough thirsty people, she thought. I'm going to roll like the ice cream truck. I'm going to mix it up in the big cooler and wagon it from street to street. The high today is going to be 94 degrees it might take me all day, but I'll sell every last drop. 256 smackers. And then tonight, Juicy, we will we count our earnings. Don't forget, winner takes all. But you don't need $256 to win, she shouted. Evan stood tall and said in, grave, in that gravely voice that all boys imitated. I don't play to win. I play to polarize. Oh, what an idiot. Jessie couldn't believe her brother could be such a jerk. She watches Evan put together his rolling lemonade stand in the garage. The big cooler was something Miss Tresky had bought a few, a few years back when she was in charge of refreshments for the school spring fling. It looked like a giant bongo drum with a screw off top and a spigot at the bottom. Evan loaded it in the wagon, then poured it in the mix from all 32 cans. He used the garden hose to fill the cooler to the top, then dumped in four trays of ice cubes with a plastic beach towel. He stirred the lemonade. The ice cubes made a weird rattling noise as they swirled around in the big drum. Using the shovel like a big spoon, he scooped out a tiny bit and tasted it. Perfect, he announced, screwing the top on tightly. Then he went into the basement to make his lemonade on wheel sign. Without a moment's hesitation, Jessie sprang into action. First, she got out a large Ziploc bag from the kitchen drawer, the kind that you could freeze a whole gallon of strawberries in if you wanted to. Then she held it upside down and wide open over the fruit bowl. She gave the bowl a solid knock. Jessie was surprised how easy it was to catch the fruit flies that floated up from the bowl. It was like they wanted to die. She filled the bag with two two more with flies, then hurried to the garage. She unscrewed the top of the big cooler, holding the first bag upside down. She unzipped it. Expecting the flies to fall down into the lemonade, they didn't. They stayed safe and dry in the bag. It was like they wanted to live. Too bad for you, stupid flies, she said, said Jessie as she plunged the bag into the lemonade. Under the surface, she turned the bag inside out, switching it, switching it back and forth so that all the flies were washed off into the lemonade. She emptied all three bags of flies into the big cooler, then hunted around until she found two green inchworms and a fuzzy gypsy moth caterpillar. She tossed them into the cooler. Then she threw a fistful of dirt for good measure. She was just about to screw the top back on when she heard Evan coming up the basement stairs. There wasn't time to get the top back on. He wouldn't see the bugs and the whole plan would be ruined. He would see the bugs and the whole plan would be ruined. Jessie ran to the steps and shouted, Evan, mom wants to see you in her office right away. Oh man, muttered Evan as he started to climb the second set of stairs. Jessie quickly screwed on the cap, grabbed her blue bathing suit from the basement, then went upstairs to her room. On the way, she passed Evan coming down. Mom didn't want to see me, he said annoyed. Jessie looked surprised. That's what it sounded like, she yelled, something down the stairs. I thought it was, get Evan, Jesse shrugged. So I got you. 
From a bedroom window, she watched Evan rolling down the street with his lemonade on wheel stand. He was like one of those old time peddlers calling out, lemonade, get your ice cold lemonade here, as he walked. For one lightning brief second, Jessie felt a stab of regret. She could see how hard he was straining to pull the heavy cooler. She knew what it was like to stand in the hot sun selling lemonade. But the feeling was snuffed out by the hurricane of anger she felt when she remembered Evan's gravely voice pulverized. Jessie switched into her bathing suit, packed up her beach bag, and said a quick goodbye to her mother as, as the motorist pulled into the driveway. What a great day for the beach, said her mother. Have fun and be home in time for the fireworks, okay? The fireworks. Yup, Jessie imagined there would be some fireworks tonight. Stay tuned for chapter 11.